Hi, and welcome to the Haddonfield United Methodist Church Weekly Sermon Podcast. For more information about us or anything you hear in this episode, be sure to visit HaddonfieldUMC.org. We hope that this and every episode can help sustain you on the journey as together we seek to put our faith into action. Hi friends, welcome to our sermon podcast here at Haddonfield United Methodist Church. My name is Reverend Chris Heckert and I serve as the senior pastor here. This is a special weekend in the life of our church. We are hosting a revival with guest preacher Rachel Billups and guest worship leader uh, Lan Wilson. Reverend Billups is also going to preach on Sunday morning. So the message that I'm going to offer is just going to be a brief meditation tonight. And I encourage you to check out our worship either in the live stream at 9 a.m. or 10.30 on Sunday morning, or you can always go to our YouTube channel and find it afterward and find Reverend Rachel Billups' sermon. We're excited to have her with us. Well, as we gather today, I am gonna look at the same, same theme she will be preaching on, which is resetting priorities. But let's just take a moment to reset our hearts and our minds. If you wanna find ways to go deeper in the life of our church, you can go to haddonfieldumc.org slash now, and we ask that you give to support our ministries. And then if you find service opportunities or things you want to learn about, please reach out and make contact with us. But for a moment, I want to go to God in prayer. And hitting the reset button, of course, I think about delaying the alarm. But As we're looking in our sermon series this January at Reset, it's really about trying to make better choices in our lives and to go to God with our needs and to do the things that are most important to us. So I want you to think about what are your prayer priorities. Think about the things you're grateful for that you might overlook, might take for granted, might not think of God, thanks for the space, for the gift of technology, for people that are connected across space and time, for the person running this camera, for people who will send it out. I want you to think about your gratitude and hold it for a moment. And we also have a lot that we are concerned about, worried about, afraid, uneasy, in our lives, the lives of our family and friends, and in our world. Now let's go to God with both of those. God, we are deeply grateful that you've given us the gift of life. Whether it's going the way we want it to or not, you give us breath. You give us sunrises. You give us people in our lives. You give us humor. You give us food and shelter. You give us community. You give us your love and your son, Jesus Christ. God, receive now our prayers of gratitude. And oh God, as we are grateful, we are also in need. We are in need of strength, of resilience, of guidance, of healing, of the ability to forgive and to let go, the ability to love and care. God, we pray for our family members and friends who struggle, those who are sick in the hospital or have lost loved ones. We pray for a hurting world, for an ugly election cycle looming, for wars in Ukraine, Israel, and Palestine, and around the world. God, wherever there is hurt and pain and fear and violence and injustice, we pray that your wholeness, your restoration, and your reconciliation will prevail. May your peace begin with us. And may we share it in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. A new year, a new chance to meet your goals, lose weight, get in better shape, achieve that long-held goal. The problem with New Year's resolutions is that they are often lofty, but our ability to stick with them fades away after a few weeks. What we really need in this new year is a reset. Join us in January as we let go of the clutter, stress, and anxiety of the past and allow God to reset our priorities, our rhythm, and our hearts together to give 2024 a fresh start.
Friends, the brief reflection I want to offer today is in the theme of resetting our priorities. And I have chosen a, a different scripture than Reverend Billups will be preaching on in church. But I want to reflect on Mark chapter 1, verses 32 to 39. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out their demons. Well, the term reset, hit a reset, I think of a few things. Of course, the alarm clock. I also think of phones and computers when things are running slowly or freezing or there's something wrong, the first thing you want to do is figure out how to do a soft reset, which is not restoring it to its factory settings, but, but to turn it off and to start it over. That usually solves most technological glitches. And I have found that coming into the month of January, I need a reset because like a computer that's overwhelmed with running too many files or whatever it is, December's crazy. Not only at a church, we spend too much, we eat too much, we do too much, and we worry too much. So when we begin a new year, often clothes are a little tight, checking account lines are a little low, credit card bills are a little high, and so I need a reset. We've been looking at different ways of doing that, of resetting our commitment to God, remembering that we are baptized and being grateful and living into that. And this week, I want to look at how do we prioritize and so that we can be of maximum usefulness to God. When I was in my late 20s, I came across this book called Out of Solitude. It's a tiny little book by Henry Nowen. Uh, a Roman Catholic priest and a spiritual, one of the best spiritual writers of the 20th century. This tiny little book rocked my world. In my 20s, I was going to college and then grad school and then grad school, trying to be ordained, trying to achieve, trying to figure out who I was going to become, getting married, moving around, trying to find the right positions and the right roles and the right jobs. I encountered this book in which Father Henry Nowen says that it's not difficult to see that in our particular world, we all have a strong desire to accomplish something. And he goes on to, to how we, whether you want to send someone to space or accomplish some great thing or just achieve the things that make you happy, more often than not, he says, we not only desire to do meaningful things, but we often make the results of our work the criteria of our self-esteem. I am only as good as what I was able to accomplish or do or the people I was able to make happy. Listen to this. He says, when we start being too impressed by the results of our own work, we slowly come to the erroneous conviction that life is one large scoreboard where someone is listening to the points to measure our worth. And before we are fully aware of it, we have sold our soul to the many grade givers. Now, and would write in other places throughout his life that we are not what we do, we are not what we have, and we are not what others think of us. But the world, at least in my early 20s, told me that that was absolutely true, that I was only as good as the degrees I could get or the career path or the family I would have. And so reading this kind of early on in my ministry, it stopped me in my tracks and helped me to realize that my priorities matter. This entire little book was a sermon series that Nowen preached. 
at Yale in uh, Connecticut. And it's, it's all based around this story that I read from Mark in which Jesus, who's very busy all the time, he's traveling from place to place to place, tra- uh, preaching and healing and, and listening to people who come to him with their hurts. And I can't imagine how overwhelmed he must have felt and how really overwhelmed his disciples must have felt because they weren't really able to help. They just had to manage Jesus and all of these people. And so here in this text, after a busy tour of traveling, healing, preaching, Jesus disappears. And not only does Jesus go away to pray early in the morning, but the disciples are surprised by this. And Peter is frustrated by this. He says, didn't you know we're looking for you? Everyone's been looking for you. I've texted you five times. I called you. You didn't pick up. That's what I imagine it would be like today. And then Jesus says, Okay, let's go. The prayer time and the inner interior life of Jesus seems to be a little blip in the real estate of this passage. And yet it is so important for us to realize that Jesus' work is rooted in his ultimate priority, which is connection with God. Throughout the Gospels, there are stories just like this one, where Jesus goes by himself He gets in a boat. Many of the healing stories and the feeding of the 5,000 all come in the context of Jesus trying to be alone with God. It is his ultimate priority. In the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 6, Jesus says, Seek first the kingdom of heaven and everything will be added to you. Now, he's saying that in the context of don't worry. Don't worry about what you'll have, what you'll wear, what you eat, what you achieve, what you do, what other people think of you. But seek first God's reign, kingdom of heaven, and God will give you what you need. Well, think about your priorities. Maybe think about last year. What did you work really hard to do? What did you spend most of your time on, most of your money on, most of your resources on? And now I want you to think about this somewhat clean slate of a year. Don't think about what do you want to accomplish. Don't think about what you want to achieve. Don't think about promises that you'd make to yourself, but think about what is important. So instead of saying, I want to drop 25 pounds, say, my physical health is important. Instead of saying, I want to publish this thing or accomplish this thing, say, what's really important is that I am am of usefulness or that I fulfill my potential in what I'm able to do. So I want you to think about your priorities, not your achievements. And remember what Nowen says, I am not what I do. It's not the outcome. I'm not what I have. It's not about your possessions. And I'm not what other people think of me. It's not about people's perceptions. It's about your intentions. What are you proceeding from? So yeah, I personally would like to lose another 20 pounds. I'd like to finish an academic program. I'd like to publish a book. I have a long list of things that I want to do. But most importantly, I want to be healthy. I want to be a good friend, a good dad, a good husband, a good pastor. I want to be present to people who are around me. But most of all, I want God to use my gifts and my brokenness to serve other people. I would put that at the top of the list of what my priorities are for this year. And then what do I need to do to make that the top priority? I need to be available to others. I need to not be in as much of a hurry. I need to be spending time with God in prayer. I need to do things that help me to nurture my interior. I want you to think about the same things for yourself. Not your achievements, but what are your priorities? Friendships, family, well-being, serving, helping, spending more time in nature, whatever it is, and then think what you need to do to undergird those priorities. Someone shared with me uh, recently a book, and uh, this book really has been a beautiful resource for me. And uh, it's called Habits of the Household, Practicing the Story of God in Everyday Family Rhythms by Justin Whitmell Early. And I couldn't help but 
be taken by this one text that says it's about life being messy. Remember, we're not focusing on outcomes. We're focusing on priorities. Life is messy. If you're adverse to messy prayers, then you're adverse to prayer. If you can't tolerate spills, you'll avoid eating with kids. If you don't like conflict in relationship, then you're not going to like relationship. If you can't handle a mess in the kitchen, then you can't handle hospitality. If you can't stomach awkward moments, then you won't much like the conversation that leads to the great moments. And if you have trouble with fights, then you won't be much good at forgiveness. I had to reread this a few times and think about that. Nobody likes awkwardness. I hate awkwardness. I have awkward interactions all the time. Messes don't bother me as much as some people. I don't like conflict. But letting go of the need to prevent these things and letting go of our desire to only have the good things, focus on what is your priority. Loving God, loving your neighbor, and being of use to God. And know this, in 2024, you're going to have some messes. You're going to have some fights. You're going to have discomfort. You're going to have awkwardness. You're going to have disappointed goals. You're going to have regret. But most of all, may grace abound in your life and seek first God's presence in your life and seek first God's reign and allow God to give everything else to you. Friends, let's reset our priorities together in this year. Allow God to use us as the hands and feet of Christ. Thanks for joining me in the sermon podcast, and let us together seek to be the church in a hurting world. Thanks again for listening. For more information about us or anything you heard in this episode, be sure to visit HaddonfieldUMC.org. Through today's scripture and message, we pray that you find strength to go deeper into love of God and neighbor as we work together to be the church in a hurting world.